Oh, okay. oh, you're live. Hey, everybody. What's going on? All right. So Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. We actually realized this whole time that we weren't live. Uh, so we've been, stuff's been going on, and we weren't, uh, we haven't been live. So guess what? We're live now. All right. That's awesome. So, yeah. So how y'all doing? So I'm going to start now uh, by welcoming you all here. Uh, we had a little bit of a difficulty and a little bit of a delay, but hopefully you still are here and you haven't, uh, you haven't left. But for those of you who are here, uh, we're so glad that you can join us for this, uh, this online session here. And um, the, this time, you know, this time of the, the coronavirus, um, you know, all seriousness has brought a lot of fear and it's brought a lot of trepidation. It's brought a lot of anticipation. Uh, for us, so uh, in this time is unique because we're sitting here at home. We can't, we can barely go anywhere. You, you, there's no school, which maybe for some of you that's a good thing because you don't like school or you, you find it nice that you can spend every day sleeping in. But for a lot of people, it's a time of fear. You know, there's a virus that's going around and you hear about all these new confirmed cases and the number seems to get exponentially bigger each day and then you find out people are dying from it and the news feed can make you almost insane just reading it because there's so much going on out there um, that it can really just make your head spin. But I want us to take the time right now to really just focus on what is uh, impo most important and that's God. Uh, we need to focus on him. It's very easy to lose our heads in this situation and to become worried about what's going to happen next. You hear about the stock markets and maybe your parents are a little worried because they're wondering what's going to happen to their money and people are going to lose their jobs and you hear the economy is going to be in bad shape. But with all that aside, we can still focus on God during this time. We can still focus on him. And even though we can't, we feel like we have the most important thing ripped apart from us as a church, which is our ability to meet, which is our ability to uh, come together and assemble, we can't do that now. But that doesn't mean that all is lost and doesn't mean that hope is lost because God is still God whether we have a church building or not. You know, in the, in the Greek language, for those of you who remember, uh, ecclesia is a Greek word for church, and it means a gathering of uh, believers. Uh, and it basically means that the church is the church wherever we are. We're the church right now. Even though we don't have a meeting, we don't have a Friday night, we don't have a Sunday morning, we don't have any other event that's going on, we are still the church. We still meet. Uh, so we still are together. We have an identity. It's about the people, not just about the building. And now that reality is even more so. So I would like to open in a word of prayer. And then Assistant Youth Director Dorothy is going to come. And she is going to lead us uh, in worship. Uh, but first, I'm going to open in a word of prayer. Um, you can still pray with me. This is not a show of me doing something online from the chapel. Uh, this is a chance for us to come together as a whole community and pray. So you can still take a praying posture. You don't have to, of course, but you can bow your heads, uh, close your eyes. You can go on your knees, on your stomach, whatever you feel would be most comfortable for you, or whatever you want to do. But do try to take a praying posture of some kind of sort because we're praying together whether we're in the same room or not. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you that you brought us here together. I know the coronavirus produces a lot of fear and produces a lot of uh, problems that we have. Uh, I pray that you would allow us uh, the opportunity to um, just seek you during this time. Even though we don't have the opportunity to gather together, we can still be able to seek you in our homes and in whatever way we can. Lord, thanks to the 21st century technology, Lord, and those who blaze a trail for it, we have the ability to still have contact with each other, even if it's through the internet. I pray that you would uh, bless this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this time, Assistant Youth Director Dorothy will come and lead us in worship. Hi, y'all. Um, as Pastor Steve said, although we cannot meet together physically, um, praise God because we are bonded by the Holy Spirit. 
And although I mourn our physical meetings as much as any of you all, um, wherever we are, we have the privilege of being able to worship our great God who delights in us. So let us come together and sing this hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And it's with a little bit more upbeat bluegrass tone. So um, if you have it on your mobile device or you have a piece of paper, cord book, whatever it may be, uh, pull it up with me and we can sing this together. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. <laughs> very much. So, we're so glad that you could be here with us today. So what um, I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, anime. Um, so, we've been wanting to do this for a few weeks. You know, when it comes to, uh, you know, just talking about anime, this is something that is a new experience to me because when I was um, growing up and uh, it wasn't there. I know I'm kind of old by saying that. Uh, when I was in high school is when Pokemon became popular, uh, but by that point it seemed like it was a children's show and uh, something that little kids got into, so I wasn't really into it, uh, even though a number of kids in our high school were into it, and you know, because us older kids, juniors and seniors, we, we were into a lot of stuff that probably we shouldn't be into, I shouldn't be mentioning here, but it was something that I never really got into. So this is really a new experience for me. I've learned a lot in like researching it and learning about it through some of you all and just through different sources uh, and learning about, uh, about um, anime and, and, and what it means and what it represents uh, and, and things like that. Um, so Adam, is that game ready? 
Yeah. All right. So we're going to have a little bit of a game here. So what you're going to do, what we're going to do on the screen, what should be the case, is you're going to see a clip from an anime show. So you're going to have to guess what show that anime clip comes from. So on the screen, you'll see it. It will be in what is it, the lower left hand corner. Is that lower, lower left hand corner of the screen? Maybe it's that. This right. this one, right? Start it. Yeah, not right yeah, now. Yeah, not, no, not, no, not, no, not the one you're pointing. Yeah, yeah, this one, right? Yeah, not yeah. Okay, so we're gonna play a clip. It'll be 30 seconds. If you're the first to get it right, oh. you get five points. Uh, if you get it right, and but you're not the first, you get three points. And if you don't, get, if you if you just answer, just put out an answer, even if it's wrong, you get one point. Okay, so we're gonna play the clip. We're gonna be five clips. We're gonna play it, and then you're gonna have the opportunity uh, to guess which clip it is. We'll play 30 seconds of each of these clips. So you ready? Ready, Adam? Yeah. Go ahead. Go. All right, so let's see if you're able to get. You had to guess it before the clip ended. I should have made. I should have mentioned that. But anyway, that clip was from the show Attack on Titan. Okay, so if you got Attack on Titan, you're right. If you were the first one, that if, you, if your comment came through the first, you got five points. All right, but if you answered, you got one point. And if you just if you guessed but you weren't the first, you got it right. Uh, you got three points. Now, the next clip. Shout out to Andrew Wong. Shout out to Andrew Wong who got it. Who was the first one to get it right? All right, now. Second clip. Morning, everyone. Ready for your first day? Hey, you're late! Well, a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take the long way. Uh... What's your distance from the target? Five meters! I'm ready, just give the signal. I'm ready, too. So am I. All right, so that clip was from the show Naruto. So if you click, if you entered in Naruto, you got it right. So congratulations to Judah, who was the first one to guess that. All right, now here's the next clip. And now, without further distraction, we move directly to the day's main event. In the red corner, the flame alchemist and hero of the Eastern Rebellion, Colonel Roy Mustang, give it up! You just won a promotion. In the blue corner, the full metal alchemist and living legend of the people. Let's hear it for Edward Elric. What? Where? I can't see him. Working grave school is more like it. Good luck, Beans, bro. <laughs> Don't tell me, Smoke. All right. So, that clip was from... We done? Okay. Yes, yes. That, is that, okay. that clip was from the show Full Metal Alchemist. All right. So, if you guessed Full Metal Alchemist, uh, you are correct. All right, Danny Liu. So congratulations to you. You were the first one uh, to, to guess that. So you got five points. Next clip. Uh, don't you guys have uniforms that aren't so flashy? Actually, that's one of our less flashy ones. <laughs> you look great. I'm in a guild. I guess it's sort of my fault, isn't it? No, this is a good opportunity. As a solo player, I got as far as I could go. That makes me feel a little better. All right. So, that was from Sword Art Online. So if you were... Guess that Sword Art Online, you got it correct. Congratulations again to Danny Lou. You were the first one to get it, so you get five points for guessing Sword Art Online. And now, last one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, um, what a useless 
information. You've changed your hair, so what? <laughs> Just wait! Has he really found a way to surpass an ascended Saiyan? Is that possible? He must be bluffing. I mean, what would that make him? Double ascended? And this! <laughs> What's he doing? Alright. Hindog! Also known <laughs> as Henry Wynn. Alright, you are the first to guess that one correct. That is from the show Dragon Ball Z. Alright, so thank you all for playing. Uh, the rest of you can add up uh, just the points you have. You know, it's honor code. It's all good here. We're a church. We're, a, we're all honest, right, people. So, thanks for playing uh, the anime game. So now, I'm going to talk a little bit about anime. Like I said before, this is as much as a research experience for me as it was anything else. Um, so, one thing you can do is uh, you can name your favorite show, anime show, or any moment that you, you remember from an anime show in the comment box, which is over here uh, to the right side of the screen. Um, so you can name your uh, favorite anime show or just any moment that you remember from the show that you like in the comment box. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the theological implications of it. I know it's something that a lot of us like, a lot of us watch, a lot of you watch. I can tell by the speed by which you're able to guess how quickly uh, the show was that you, you watch a lot of it. Uh, like I said, it was a little bit more of a research experience for me because I didn't watch a lot of it growing up. It wasn't around when I was growing up. But on this chart here, on the next slide, um, you should see that there's been a lot of growth of anime. So from 2004 to 2016, um, this is a 12 year span, you can see that the revenues, they doubled. Like it got really, there was a drastic increase, especially since 2012, there's been an 85% increase in revenue uh, in that four year span. So this is a big deal. Um, I know a lot of you consume Japanese animation and it's popular, but what about it? it, it should, there's, are there certain things that we should be concerned about as it relates to watching it? Uh, you know, how should we look at this from a biblical perspective? We should always, in everything we do, we should always look at what does the Bible say? You know, it, are we, what does God say? Not just what does society say, not what is the latest fad, what is the latest trend, you know, what's the coolest thing that's out there right now. We should always ask ourselves, well, what does the Bible really say about this? So. There's a passage I want us to consider uh, as we look about this. And this passage is not just good for anime. It's good for a lot of things that are out there. So if you have a Bible, it's 1 Corinthians 8. The word's going to be down here uh, on the lower left in, in, in the slide. So read along with me. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter four, 8, chapter 8, verses 4 through 13. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things come and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone knows this. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat such food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to an idol, and since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your freedom does not bring us, uh, become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone with a weak conscience sees you who have this knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't he be emboldened to eat what has been sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against your brothers in this way, and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that it will not cause him to fall. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a backdrop to this story. Now you can just kind of type in, in the comment section, yes or no, if you were in Sunday school when we went over 1 Corinthians 8 last year. You know, obviously we can't have like a hand raising kind of thing like that. Maybe you want to raise your hand if you want to do. That's fine. But you can enter in the comment box, yes or no. I was there when we talked about this passage in Sunday school. So <clears throat> this place is in Corinth, since Corinthians is the name of the book. And Corinth is a cosmopolitan environment. What I mean by that, not the magazine cosmopolitan, okay? But it's an environment where there's a lot of people from all over, kind of like this area. There's a lot of people that come from all over the world. It was the same uh, in Corinth which also meant that there were a lot of different religions, a lot of different ways of life, a lot of philosophies. 
and a lot of religions been a lot of gods. And in those days, they made gods of stone and wood. They made big statues, kind of like the Statue of Liberty. And, in, and they worshipped it. They offered sacrifices to it. So they would take an animal. Like in those days, you know, they didn't have like grocery stores like we have now. They had like animals. So they had a cow, and that was their steak and their milk. They had chickens. That was their chicken. And, you know, and, and the pig was their pork, things like that. So they would, they would sacrifice. You kill one of their own animals that was one of the better animals and they would offer it to the gods or to this this big statue and they would burn incense they would burn it and the idea that the god would give them favor or give them things that they wanted maybe it was their business maybe they wanted more money maybe they wanted happiness or whatever it is or they wanted uh, to win their war the god would give it to them so afterwards these people realized wait a minute you know what we can actually like sell this meat and or we can eat it or or better than that we could sell the meat in the marketplace and we can make a lot of money off of it so people started doing that so <clears throat> a lot of christians began to wonder a lot about this so these newly formed christians who were in corinth now two camps begin to form so two camps one of them says it's just meat and then Another one, okay, says it's idolatry. So one says it's meat, man. Like, it's a cow. It's chicken. It's beef. Another one says, no, this is idolatry because this, this meat was offered in a sacrifice to a god. So by eating this meat, we are, A, we're either supporting idolatry because we're, we're, we're we're in enabling them to do more of this kind of thing or it, we're just participating in it because this something about this this meat was used in an ungodly way in idol worship so therefore we can't eat it so these two camps and then a division began to form in the church uh, as a result of that so and like verse 8 you know food does not bring us near to God we're like, no worse if we do eat, no better if we do. That's camp one. Camp two, not everyone knows this. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat such food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to an idol, since their conscience is weak, is defiled. And <clears throat> a similar thing happens in media with pop culture, especially media from a Christian group that's not, or a group that's not Christian. And anime is no different. So they're cartoons, right? But there are certain things in them that we can be aware of that can be a stumbling block. A point that can cause problems to someone's faith or even our own if we're not careful so we have to be vigilant and careful in how we in the kind of media that we consume and this applies to all media now I mean whatever you watch and but we're just gonna focus on anime today but it's definitely applies to all media so at this point I want to ask this question so while I'm talking you can ask any questions that you may have about the topic I want to end at the topic and then I'll answer them uh, at the end and then you all can just um, um, write, some, maybe you all can just take the question. Or you can actually, if you want, you can DM us uh, or if you need to. So uh, any questions you ask, you can put them in the comment box. So I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. So <clears throat> I'll start by defining anime. So anime is the Japanese term for animation. So it's uh, outside Japan. It's animation from Japan or as a Japanese disseminated animation uh, characterized by colorful graphics, vibrant characters, and fantastical themes. So it's one of those, like, I know it when I see it kind of things, right? For example, The Simpsons. You know, if you watch The Simpsons, like, we would say that is not anime, okay? Or for maybe Family Guy, that is not anime. So, not, or if you're, like, you know, older, like me, and you remember, like, the old style cartoons, like the Smurfs, you know, was it? That is not anime. So, even though it's animation, we don't call that anime. But so even though it's hard to draw the line exactly what is anime and what isn't, we all kind of have an idea. So why kind of stick with that kind of idea for the most part? So there's a lot to consider because this topic is so vast. So I'm going to consider two things that we need to look at uh, as it relates to anime um, and helping us discern whether or not it can be a problem um, in our faith. So the first one is good versus evil. Um, so it's really hard to understand anime. Um, and 
but in order to really understand it, uh, you got to understand Japanese culture. Because in most cultures, like arts and entertainment, are the most tangible expressions of that culture. So, what is the most practiced religion in Japan? You can write that in the comments section, and I'll see if. Just I'll take the next like 30 seconds. Just write it in the comment section. What is the most pain? Try to not go on Wikipedia, okay? Try to do this out of your own brain, all right? <laughs> uh, the most practiced religion in Japan. So what are some of the answers that we got, Dorothy and Adam? Shinto, yes. Shintoism is the most practiced religion in Japan. That's right. Buddhism is second. Yes, Shintoism and then Buddhism. So... Shinto, what is it? Shinto is a polytheistic belief system that involves the veneration of many deities known as kami, or sometimes as jingi. So it's described as a, where humans are fundamentally good and evil is believed to be caused by evil spirits. So consequently, the purpose of most Shinto rituals where people go into a temple um, is to keep away evil spirits by purification, prayers, and offerings to these deities. So... <clears throat> there are temples, but it's not observed the way a lot of major religions like Christianity or Islam because and, 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 it doesn't apply to everyday life in the same type of fashion. So it's more cultural, familial, not seen as a belief system that works its way into every decision you make. Um, there's not a belief in afterlife, just gods who grant favors for this life. So this life is all there is. Um, so it doesn't have the same underlying ethic of American culture. So American culture, all its flaws, all its issues, all its problems still has at its DNA underlying Judeo-Christian ethic. Now, what, is that, what does that mean, right? Well, the Christian and Jewish worldviews still permeate a lot of what we do in our society. Even though we, a lot of us don't go to church and a lot of us don't worship or you know, we don't live a certain way, we don't live the way the Bible tells us that we ought to live. And a lot of our artistic expressions, those underlying values of Christianity and Judaism still find its way out, still work its way out. And let me explain it this way. Let's just say you have a food allergy, right? So I have kids that have food allergies. So you, life is interesting as a parent when you have a kid with food allergies. Whenever you go to a restaurant, you have to ask like the manager, not just the way at the end manager, like, like for this big book of like all these things that you know the kids have. Or excuse me, that they're written in the written in foods that the kids can't eat. And um, for example, my son has a soy and dairy allergy, so and he doesn't need an EpiPen, but there's still a bad reaction that he gets. So if I see soy uh, in the ingredients, I'll see. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, I don't have the virus. Okay, like I just I'm just losing my voice. Okay, <laughs> uh, made in a facility that uses soy, or you know. That may, it depends, right? If it says soy in the ingredients, it's off, no deal. But if it says made in the facility that uses soy, it depends. Now, certain people may have nut allergies, right? Um, and if it's nuts in it, you won't eat it. But for some cases, it's like, even if it says made in the facility that uses nuts, you won't even eat it at all. Or if it even has like the odor of nuts, you, you can't even be around it, right? So certain people have different degrees of an allergy and like what it, what it means. Because some cases, cross-contamination can be an issue. So traces of nuts from the facility can still find its way into the food. So <clears throat> manga, which is the written version of anime, and um, anime, which is the electronic version, are made in a culture that doesn't have a Christian ethic. So there's good parts, but it's and it has a Christian world view. It doesn't have a Christian world view as, it, as its DNA. So what's good and bad, what you should and shouldn't be doing, what solves a human moral problem, what doesn't may not line up with the basic teachings of the Bible. Just be aware of that as you consume this content. So in American cartoons, oftentimes there's like a lot of delineation between good and bad, right? Good guys are good, do good things. Bad guys are bad, do bad things. But in anime, a lot of times those lines can be blurred. Um, so this does reflect more reality. <clears throat> because in truth, people aren't all the way good or they're not all the way bad, but you know, but it does but you do need to be careful about oftentimes the, the underlying messages and themes that are 
put out uh, through a lot of these shows. So let me give an example of one of these. For example, one of them is the show Attack on Titan. So a big theme in the show is sacrifice. Uh, the battle is long. Uh, protection of others, right? So in this show, like right, these big creatures called titans, right? They're threatening to kill and, and eat people um, <clears throat> who've created a wall to protect themselves. So let me get some <clears throat> water because I'm losing my voice. Hey y'all, just a quick little note. Um, seems like there's a lot of conversation going online and we're, we're glad that you feel at liberty to say so many things. But at the same time, uh, please be mindful that uh, not every comment is per, per se necessary. Um, and also please, please stop trolling, you, you college kids. <laughs> Anyways. So uh, we do have moderators in the comment section and uh, hopefully this is a time to learn and to have constructive discussions. So let's, let's not be too petty now and uh, engage in this troll culture. Um, are there any questions so far we got going on? No? Have you been doing this before? Oh yeah, so while Pastor Steve is getting, getting a quick drink of water, um, feel free to put in the comment section, what are you doing? in this whole quarantine isolation shutdown session and we can get some of these answers going uh, uh yeah i'm not about to bring out my guitar and sing again so what do we got homework we got homework okay so i'm assuming y'all doing homework using two ply toilet paper One roll per per visit. Playing cell shockers. Is that video game? I, I yeah, I assume so. Oh, okay. Something I'll I'll admit my guilty pleasure is I'm um, playing Tetris on a mechanical keyboard. <laughs> piano. Oh, playing piano. Awesome. Oh, here's Pastor Steve once again. This concludes this intermission. All right, half time's over. Sorry about that. I lost my voice. It happened once before. <clears throat> it wasn't fun. All right. Attack on Titan. Sorry about that. So, uh, in this show, so you got Titans that are like threatening to kill and like eat people who created a wall uh, to protect themselves, but eventually the Titans break through the wall. So, good themes here, right? So, um, you got settling for living a pointless life behind a wall. Protection versus taking a risk, fighting for something bigger than yourself. But the finality of death is like done with a non believing worldview. And one of the shows, you know, one of the guys who's like fighting for it says, For humanity, right? Well, there's more to life than humanity, right? So we fight for something bigger. We fight for the cross, not just for humanity. Um, but. <clears throat> Death is like the pure end in this worldview. Like, that's it. Lights out. It's gone. And that comment is a reflection of that. And that show is a reflection of that. So, is that going to cause some of you to jump off the cliff with their faith? Maybe maybe not. I don't know. But beware of that. That what you put in your mind uh, is balanced by, like, staying in God's word um, and staying in with him. So, you know. Just be aware of something like that. Um, and the content, uh, something to be, things to be aware of. There's profane language on some of them. Some of them I notice. Uh, violence can be a little graphic. You know, like blood, eating people. Even though it's cartoons, it's still more graphic than a lot of cartoons in the United States who have a certain kind of standard for graphic content and language. Um, the anime has some demons. Um, and some they, they can be portrayed in ways that aren't always the way that they're portrayed in a biblical way, uh, where like demons are the bad, right? For example, uh, in the show High School DXD, um, Rias Gregory is known for having compassion, right? Well, a demon doesn't have compassion. 
They don't do things for people. Or if they do, they have an ulterior motive. Now, maybe they, they do in that show. I don't I really watch that show. I just found out about that. But maybe you know more about that than I do. But do beware um, that no demon can have a good trait. They're, demon, they're to be avoided. They're evil. Um, so don't let a, a show kind of lull you into thinking that demons can, you know, they can be good. They can maybe not be good. Like they're bad. Um, so just beware of something like that, especially when it comes to good versus evil. Second one is uh, content. Uh, <clears throat> so I mean, content, like I said, you know, beware of some of the language that's used. Um, some of them, uh, the graphic violence. And um, third thing I want to mention, which is a thing called fan service. Uh, so fan service comes from the Japanese term fansabisu. I hope I said that right. Or service cut. So, <clears throat> it's material in a work of fiction or in a fictional series which is intentionally added to please the audience. So it originated from Japanese uh, and, and you know fandom and it's been it's used in other languages and in the media. So, now that definition sounds rather innocuous, like fan service. Okay, what does that mean? But think about it. What pleases the audience in most situations? Sexuality. Uh, so, a vast overwhelming of fan service content some of it's like food and meant to kind of get your senses going but the vast amount of it is sexual um, so it's something that, like a lot of times that's where we have to be really careful because uh, many times it doesn't even relate to the plot it's just put in there just to get people's attention um, specifically a lot of especially a lot of males um, it's a distraction to the reader uh, and in is very prevalent and even though it's it's a cartoon and animated and you may think it's not real I mean just learning about it I felt kind of dirty um, just to be honest just learning about how prevalent this is in a lot of these anime cartoons um, so it's often subtle <clears throat> it gets inserted in rather than in rather pedestrian literature without warning or notice um, I mean beach scenes the way a, a, you know a female's midsection or, or, or the breasts are accentuated through his clothing, or even sometimes, in some cases, downright nudity um, in some of these shows. Um, so oftentimes it's easy to think, you know, I'm getting away with it. Because it's, not, I'm not, it's not real. It's a cartoon, right? I don't want us to think that way. Um, you know, well, oftentimes, you know, we may think, well, it's not technically pornography because they're not real people, but I don't want us to think that way. Um, why do they put it in there? It's because it elicits a reaction from the viewers. If They, they wouldn't put it in there if it didn't. Um, so that's why we have to be on our guard because of this. So on this slide here, um, you're going to see uh, um, the, anime, the top 10 anime shows with <coughs> fan service. Now I want to kind of put a, a caveat out here. Is uh, from Ranker.com. You got that up there, Adam? Top 10. Oh. Yeah. Now, oh. yeah. Oh. So <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So right here. Now this is not meant for you to go out and look at this stuff. Okay, this is for meant to you to be warned about this. So I want to just kind of put this out there. These shows are known for having a lot of fan service and specifically a lot of content that's very suggestive. Um, so don't go watching this stuff and, and say it was Pastor Steve told me to do it. No, the opposite. Okay. We're trying to warn you about what's out there. I mean, if I were you, I would avoid watching these shows. Um, even though you, maybe you watch it, maybe you watch some of these things like every day or something. I don't know, but you know, just be beware of a lot that's out there. Um, Philippians chapter four verse nine says this. Um, it says, "Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things." Uh, we shouldn't. It's hard to think about these things if you're watching shows that are littered with that kind of content. Um, even if you may say, "Oh, it's just cartoons and yeah, not real people." Like, what are you really thinking about in your mind? Because um, we have to be really careful about that. So, <clears throat> here's a good test: is if you struggle with this, is, if sexual morality is a struggle, which it, it, I mean, and, and to be frank, over the next few weeks. If you have a struggle with that, it can become even more of a struggle. Um, if you watch a lot of the shows that have these kind of content in it, it can become even more of a struggle because now you're going to have a lot of time at home doing 
you know, who knows what in front of a computer. Um, so really use that verse, Philippians chapter 4, 8, and think, what am I putting into my mind, you know? Because what you consume on the internet, what goes into your mind, is it these things? Is it true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable? Be thinking about that. Here's how to discern, um, you know, sexual morality. Think the, um, like, you know, the, the MMR vaccine. Uh, so, um, so there you go. Motive. What's the initial reason? Why, do you, why, are you, why are you watching this? Or why does this, you know, appeal to you? The mind. What's happening in your mind? When you're watching so many shows, especially if you come across, like, fan service, like, what's going in your mind? You know, maybe think, oh, is this a cartoon? Is it whatever? But what's happening in your mind? You know, is it causing some kind of a reaction in you that may even be sexual in nature, even if they're cartoon people? Um, and then the third one re- is the result. What do you do as a result of it? Do you feel like the, are you wanting to search out <coughs> more similar content as a result so don't let societal standards fool you um, as a result of this um, you may think well it's just cartoons not real it can and it can really like like mess with you um, you know it, it, especially young males um, you know be careful about the amount of sexual content they put in some of these shows, even though it's just like cartoons or whatever like that. So just really be careful. Um, really be aware of that um, the, the, as you are, are out here and you're going to spend a lot of time probably online. <coughs> Entertainment. So, that said, sorry I'm losing my voice. I'm like not uh, <coughs> making it here. Let me uh, close in a word of prayer, uh, then I'll try to answer your questions as much as I can uh, with water and try to keep my voice going. But thanks for uh, participating in this. Uh, I'll try to, I'll, I'll spend the next five-ish minutes trying to answer some of your questions, but let's close in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. I thank you for this time to come together. I pray that you would help us. I just put you first and glorify you in all that you do, God, and I pray that you would give us the opportunity to really uh, put our focus on you during this time, Lord. Where there's a lot of temptations, home a lot, dealing with a lot of free time, uh, no school, even though I know we have online school, but it's still not as rigorous as the regular school, and there's no extracurricular activities, a lot of things that keep us busy, we don't have them, and an idle mind can be a devil's workshop, and I pray that we would, uh, as we engage in whatever we're doing, that we would still keep our eyes on you, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so I allowed you to ask a question, uh, like, related to the message. Uh, so now we can look at uh, Dorothy can tell me some of the questions. Uh, so no one asked any questions. Is that right? I can't see the. Okay. Other questions? Uh, no questions? All right, well. Brandon said he has a question. All right, what is Brandon? All right, Brandon, so I got a question, so what? what's the question? Oh, well, Paul came up first. Paul said, does this also apply to books? Does it also apply to books? Of course it also applies to books, um, which is literature and, and as well. So. You gotta be, we should be on our guard for everything that we read. It's about what comes into the mind, not just what is through a screen. I mean, that's one way things come into the mind, but it applies to hmm? Does this apply to music? Does this apply to music? Of course it does. Um, this kind of the principle that I'm given, it applies like to everything. I mean, I mean, all media, not just, I mean, I'm focusing on anime because I want to talk about those specific things, but it applies to all things. Uh, media related especially it's, it's about what comes in the mind I mean, always be aware of what you're listening to what you're watching um, and I'm not, I'm not going to come out here and say don't listen to anything or anything that's not like under a Christian label because that'd be legalistic but at the same time know that what formulates your actions comes from what you put in your mind any other questions Was there an anime that I enjoyed? 
I did kind of like watching Attack on Titan and the another one I can't think of the name off of the right now. It's about a maybe you can help me out here. It's about a, the nerd kids in a high school. He has like certain kids have like freak powers in this school. Um, no, it's not that one. It's like he's in this kid like he wants to get into this school. But, like, maybe you can write this in the comment section to help me out here. I saw, like, a couple of clips of it. But this kid, he, he, he wants to get into this school really bad. He doesn't have, like, a freak power. And the other kids in this school have, like, freak powers. They have, or, or I think it's a quirk is, I think, the word that's used for it. Maybe somebody can write it up there. I saw it. I forgot the name of it. But, uh... Some anime can contain other religions mm -hmm. or traditions other than Christianity. Still all right to enjoy content without taking it to heart. It you can enjoy it without taking it to heart. I think the more you know, you depart from the Christian messages that, especially messages that that are um, contradictory, you have to balance it and just you know. I mean, you have to be careful. I know there's a lot of debates like over like yoga versus and then like transcendental meditation. There's a lot of debates over that. You know, a lot of this applies because, you know, what are the underlying principles? A lot of it is to come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Um, you know, so if we watch this, um, you know, consider, like, other religions that are in there and if they're practiced, you know, it's important to make sure that you're keeping up with quiet time, like you're, you know, you're reading the Bible and like you're, you're, you're making sure you're infusing yourself ultimately with that worldview. Like, your mind is a space. You know, think of it as a space. Like, you know, what are you going to put in that space? You know, and, and, and what's the dominant thing you're going to put in that space? What's going to be the centerpiece of that space? You know, and, and are you going to make it? I mean, if you, if you watch, and it could be anything, not just anime. It could be a bunch of other things that's not the Bible, that's not God's Word, that's not prayer, that's not seeking, you know, the values, you know, of God. It, it will... It will ultimately destroy you and corrupt you, no matter what it is. Well, they, to answer your question, they believe it's called My Hero Academia. Yes, it is. Yes, My Hero Academia. Yes, so that was one that I, I did like watching for a little bit. I felt bad for that kid. At least I watched the first few episodes. <laughs> yeah. Any others? All right, so thank you for coming, uh, participating in our teens group live online interactive experience apologies for uh the delay early on and also for me losing my voice in the middle of everything um so thanks to my compatriots bringing me a lot of water i was able to keep it restored i'm going to close in a word of prayer we're going to do this again um at a date that will be announced with activities that will be announced so do kind of you know stay around stay we want to stay in touch as much as we can much as possible having these kind of online uh, experiences while we try to manage through this coronavirus society quasi shutdown kind of deal. So let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that you've given us, and I pray that you would help us uh, just understand um, what it really means to follow you during this time, Lord. It's a difficult time. It's an, it's an unprecedented time. It's a time that provides a lot of worry for a lot of us, but I pray that we would focus on you. We would keep our focus on you, Lord. We would keep our mindset from just kind of going haywire and going all over the place and be able to really understand, Lord, how to keep our minds focused on you and not have it just go haywire and just really abuse this time, Lord. So many people are going to abuse this time, sadly, uh, by doing things that are not um, healthy, not productive, being inside all day and a lot of the the worst things that we fear about a lot of people may may happen but lord i pray that that would not be the case with us that we would grow deeper there's a lot of opportunity there's a lot of threats to this time but there's also a lot of opportunities at this time and that we would be able to use this as an opportunity to grow deeper in our faith with you be able to take our faith seriously to rather than just rely on a church service to feed us everything lord we would learn how to feed ourselves we would learn how to be disciplined and seeking you reading, learning about you and how to follow you and how to live and love the way Jesus loved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all for coming. We're so glad that you could join us with this on this uh, live interactive experience, and we'll see you all next time. And that's what we put out about the next time uh, we'll gather together to do this. Thank you all, and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thanks.